made even his eternal power and Godhead so that they are without excuse because that when they knew God they glorified him not as God neither were thankful but became vain in their imaginations and their foolish heart was darkened so the verse tells us that from the invisible things of the world you can clearly see and understand his eternal power and Godhead now we know that God created the heaven and the earth we, we look at creation we should be able to see God if you see God in creation you see the Godhead why because all because the Godhead created heaven and earth now we can't look at creation and understand the Trinity the triune nature of God per se that the three persons one God that's not what he's saying but the word Godhead appears about three times in the Bible the, the word Trinity does not appear in the Bible so we use the word Godhead because we know it's a reference to all three persons of the Godhead. So man's without excuse. God's given two witnesses. You know, people, I remember the question that was supposed to be the stumper, you know, for a believer that witnesses and shares the gospel. Well, what about the guy in the bush in the jungle who's never heard the gospel? What about would God, a loving God, send him to hell? You know, that's the question, because there's obviously going to be people born who never see the Bible, never, you know, have the opportunity to read about God in the scriptures. But that verse tells us that that man is without excuse, isn't he? Whoever he is, bush, desert, uh, arctic, wherever he's at, that person is without excuse because the invisible things of God from the creation of the world are clearly seen, being understood by the things that are made, even as eternal power in Godhead, so that they are without excuse. Now, I'm not going to elaborate, elaborate on this verse. I even wrote my notes, don't elaborate on this verse. <laughs> yeah. So I'm not doing that right now. Um, but understanding how God is one God in three persons isn't easy for us. Right? Because... We live in a physical, in a finite realm. In our frame of reference, all living things have a beginning and an end. And the Bible tells us God's eternal, eternally existed. So there are things about God that he reveals in his word that we just have to take by faith and, and accept because God said they're true, and that's enough for us. We believe God, they're true. Almost everything we know about God is revealed to us in his word. And the word reveals answers for our difficult questions about God. Uh, Romans chapter 10, 17 says, So then faith cometh by hearing, and hearing by the word of God. Uh, Hebrews chapter 11, verse 1, Now faith is the substance of things hoped for, for the, and the evidence of things not seen. Through faith, by the word of God, we understand that the worlds were framed by the word of God, so that things which are seen were not made of things which do appear. We don't, we, don't, we, we don't see God when we look at creation, but we understand by the word of God that God created. Now go to Genesis 1.1. Genesis 1.1. The Bible in the first three chapters tells us that God is three persons or God is not um, one person but at least, at least two in the first three chapters. We understand God is more than one person. Genesis 1.1 says, In the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth. In the beginning, who created the heaven and the earth? God, right? Now, is that in the beginning, the gods created heaven and earth? No. It's in the beginning, God created. Now, the word translated God is a word Elohim that means strong one, almighty. God almighty is the phrase we get from that. Love that term about God. He is all powerful. God almighty. Uh, and, and that's the God, that's, that, that word is also masculine. In it. So that's how we know that, you know, the people that want to say, you know, God's coming back and she's going to be angry, you know, I'll dumb it down a little bit or, or make it a little cleaner than the way it actually reads. But, uh, you know, not possible. God's masculine. So it's, it's, the scripture is not unclear about who God is. God is masculine. It's, it's he. Um, about, and, and, the spirit, and verse 2 says, And the earth was without form and void, 
And darkness was upon the face of the deep, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. Now, drop down to verse 26. And God said, let us make man in our image, after our likeness, and let them have dominion over the fish of the sea, and over the fowl of the air, and over the cattle, and over all the earth, and over every creeping thing that creepeth upon the earth. So let us make man in our image. So at least one, right, person. God is speaking to himself here. And I believe it's God the Son that's talking with God the Father and God the Holy Spirit. That's my, that's my understanding of the passage, and, and you, you can believe it's another member of the Godhead. You're free to do that. Uh, Galatians 3, verse 22. I mean, I can't be dogmatic, but I think it's the Son, the Word, the living Word. Verse 22. And the Lord God said, Behold, the man is become as one of us to know good and evil. And now, lest he put forth his hand and take also of the tree of life and eat and live forever. Therefore, the Lord God sent him forth from the garden of Eden to till the ground. So this is the first eviction in the Bible, isn't it? So man, Adam and Eve are evicted. You know, they broke the lease. They, they, uh, God kicked them out. But the point here is, us is, is a reference to the Godhead. Capital L-O-R-D there in verse 22. And God said, and the Lord God said, behold the man. That's Jehovah. So Jehovah God is three persons, but one God. So starting with the first three chapters, we see that. Go to Isaiah chapter 48. One of the, you know, there are... I always say that I love this verse, favorite verse, you know, I probably could say that about most of them. Uh, Isaiah 48, verse 16, <clears throat> 48, 16. Now, great chapter, isn't it? And, and it's in, the, you know, several great chapters here in Isaiah. It's, uh, but here the, the Lord is God, is, it's like he's defending who he is. Uh, verse 12 says, Hearken unto me, O Jacob and Israel, my called. I am he. I am the first. I am also the last. So who do we know, Alpha and Omega? Who, who speaks like that in Revelation? We know it's God the Son, right? So drop down to uh, verse 26. Or, I'm sorry, verse 16, I mean. Come ye near unto me. Hear ye this. I have not spoken in secret from the beginning from the time that it was, there am I. And now the Lord God and his spirit has sent me. There's the Father and there's the Holy Spirit. Thus saith the Lord, capital L-O-R-D, Jehovah, thy Redeemer, the Lord Jesus Christ, the Holy One of Israel. I am the Lord thy God, I'm Jehovah God, which teacheth thee to profit, which leadeth thee by the way that thou shouldest go. Any question about the Godhead being three persons? Thank you. Oh, no, I'm sorry, I'm not done yet, but I could stop there, couldn't I? Right? I mean, that verse does it. After you, you open up that verse, let the lion out of the cage, I guess you're done, right? So, uh, in the beginning, God, not the gods, created the heaven and the earth. God the Father is the creator. Go with me to Proverbs chapter 30. I'll prove it to you. God the Father is the creator. Proverbs 30, verse 4. Proverbs 30, verse 4 and 5. Who hath ascended up into heaven or descended? Who hath gathered the wind in his fists? Who hath bound the waters in a garment? Who hath established all the ends of the earth? What is his name, and what is his son's name, if thou canst tell? Every word of God is pure. He is a shield unto them that put their trust in him. Amen. Right? So, what's his name, and what's his son's name? Who's speaking? The Father. The Creator. Right? Amen. All right. Go to... Uh, mm, hang on. Let's see where we're going. <clears throat> Psalm chapter 104. Now, you remember Genesis 1-2, and the Spirit of God moved on the, on the surface of the water, right? And the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the waters. 
Psalm 104, verse 30. Now this verse proves that God the Holy Spirit is the creator. He made all things. 104, if I could get there. Verse 30. If you're there, go ahead and read it. I'm kidding. Verse 30. Thou sendest forth thy spirit, they are created. And thou renewest the face of the earth. The glory of the Lord shall endure forever. The Lord Jehovah shall rejoice in his works. God the Holy Spirit's a creator, isn't he? So there we see in that passage. And there are, go to Isaiah 44 now. <clears throat> now, the person of the Godhead that's given the most credit for being the creator is God the Son, the second person of Godhead. 44, verse 24. Thus saith the Lord, thy Redeemer, and he that formed thee from the womb, I am the Lord, Jehovah, that maketh all things, that stretcheth forth the heavens alone, that spreadeth abroad the earth by itself. So, who made, in the beginning, who made the heavens and the earth? In the beginning, God did, right? God is three persons. All three members take credit for being the creator, because they can do that, because they are one, God. And so the Bible, over and over, there's a lot of ways to look at the scriptures and see it, it reinforces, it teaches the doctrine of the Godhead. The promised Messiah is the Lord Jesus Christ, who as Jehovah God maketh all things. God reveals himself as Jehovah, who made all things, but the glory is usually given to the second person of Godhead, God the Son, for being the creator. Uh, the New Testament confirms that. We can go to John chapter 1. We love John 1, don't we? <clears throat> John 1, verse 1. In the beginning was the Word, capital W. And the Word was with God, and the Word was God, the same was in the beginning with God. All things were made by him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. And the light shineth in darkness, and the darkness comprehendeth it not. Look at uh, verse 10. He was in the world. And the world was made by him, and the world knew him not. Verse 14. And the word was made flesh, and dwelt among us, and we beheld his glory. The glory of the only begotten of the Father, full of grace and truth. Go to chapter 8, verse 16. And yet if I judge, my judgment is true, and I am not alone, but I and the Father that sent me. It is also written in your law that the testimony of two men is true. I am one that beareth witness of myself, and the Father that sent me beareth witness of me. Then, then said they unto, unto him, Where is thy Father? Jesus answered, You neither know me nor my Father. If ye had known me, ye should have, also, ye should have known my Father also. Now, drop down to verse 18. We've read 18. Um, how should they have known him and the Father? How should they have known the Lord and the Father? Now, the, the quick answer is, you know, naturally you'd think, you know, he's saying, you've seen me, you've watched my miracles, you've seen the things, my credentials. It was told in the Old Testament I would come, raising the dead, and, and the lame would walk, and the, the blind would see, and the dumb would hear, the deaf and the dumb would hear. And they should have recognized who he was by just what he did, right? But the, the correct answer for how they should have known him was because of what the Old Testament scriptures said to them about their Messiah. When he would come, exactly what he would do, they should have believed the scriptures concerning him. And if they would have believed the scriptures, they would have known that he and the Father are one, 
We've looked at the passages this morning. So that's why they should have known him. That's why he's mad with, in, in dealing with the religious leaders in Israel is they don't believe the scripture, do they? They don't believe who he is because they don't believe the scriptures that should have prepared them for his coming. Now, <clears throat> Lazarus had been four days dead in a tomb without refrigeration. I had that. You know, you know what that would mean? Yeah. Uh, and the Lord did not give Lazarus CPR. You know, uh, somebody's dead a few seconds and you zap them with the paddles, you might restart his, their heart, right? Four days in the tomb. His body was decomposing. It smelled like rotting flesh when they rolled that stone away. The reason they rolled the stone over was to contain that, was for it to be sanitary, to prevent the stench, right? But the Lord cried with a loud voice, Lazarus, come forth! He had to yell loud because Lazarus wasn't there. <laughs> Where was he? He was in the heart of the earth, wasn't he? He was in Abraham's bosom in paradise. Just like when Saul brought Samuel up. And Samuel, you know, why did you disturb me? <laughs> you know, Samuel seems a little irritated with Saul. He, had to, he, he called him forth. His spirit and his soul came up entered back into his body and came out hopping as fast as he could. Lord, I got here as quick as I could, <laughs> right? He didn't use a defibrillator. Then he rose and rebuked the winds in the, sea, in the sea, and there was a great calm. Know anybody can do that? <laughs> and in the fourth watch of the night, Jesus went unto them walking on the sea. Easy, right? Once you learn how to do it. Yeah. <laughs> Peter tried it, didn't he? Yeah. He said, I and my Father are one. Jesus said unto Philip, anyone who has seen me has seen the Father. Why? Because he's the Godhead. He's the creator. They're all, they're one. Now, he tells the Sadducees in Matthew 22, and I'm about out of time, Matthew 22, 29, tells the Sadducees, ye do err not knowing the scriptures nor the power of God. That was their fault. They didn't believe the scriptures. Um, and in verses 31 and 32, he says, have you not read that which was spoken unto you by God? The living word is saying this, you know. He, Haven't you read my book? You know, right? Saying that I am the God of Abraham and the God of Isaac, and the God of Jacob. Now, in 2 Peter, and we don't have time to go there, but you're familiar with the passage, 2 Peter chapter 1, 16 through 21, Peter says, we were eyewitnesses of his glory. We were there when he was transfigured, the Lord Jesus Christ. We saw it. God glorified him right in front of us. But what does he say? Does he say, that's my confidence that, that he is God. No, he says, but we have a more sure word of prophecy. He believed the scriptures over his personal experience. And so should we. Um, go with me to 2 Corinthians chapter 13 and we'll close. <clears throat> Second Corinthians 13 verse 14. The grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the communion of the Holy Ghost be with you all. Amen. Thank you.